Welcome to this joint press conference by Minister of Defense of Finland, Mr. Antti Häkkänen, and Minister of Defense of Germany, Mr. Boris Pistorius. We will start off this press conference with an opening remarks uh, by the ministers. After that, we have time for questions. Minister Häkkänen, please. Well, first of all, Boris, warmly welcome to Helsinki. It's great to see you here in, in Finland, new NATO member. And uh, during your visit in Nordic countries, Sweden also came to member member of NATO. This is truly, yeah. truly happy, happy, happy times. Uh, German and Finland has had good cooperation inside EU in all the fields and now in the security policy. Like we see that Europe must stand up. Defense policy is our main project, uh, what we should do. and. Uh, we had good cooperation uh, uh, dialogue, what we should do uh, bilaterally also. Uh, we have had good support from uh, Germany uh, during the NATO accession process and in the bilateral defense cooperation earlier than our NATO membership. But I think now the NATO membership and the all Nordic countries are also in the NATO this will kind of broaden the perspective, what should we do uh, to protect European values and democracy in future decades. Uh, we know that uh, Russia is gaining their military power uh, in Ukraine, but still we know that the threat, what comes from Ukraine is not the only threat. The Russia is, is a long-term threat. Uh, it's a long-term military threat to, towards European countries. And we see that also they are gaining uh, their partners uh, uh, and allies throughout the world. They are getting support from other totalitarian countries. We know that the democratic countries are not winning this game uh, by themselves. We have to do much more in, in the Western alliance. And that's why the Western unity, European leadership in, in uh, defense policies is highly uh, crucial at this time. Uh, we have to support Ukraine much more uh, in future years. Uh, that's an acute challenge, but still a long-term challenge is to ramp up the European defense industry, ramp up the European defense budgets, uh, and that's, that's what we are doing. Uh, I'm happy to see Boris here in, here in Helsinki because we have also a lot of cost-effective way to build up uh, defense, uh, and we are willing to have this dialogue with other countries also from conscription system, total defense system, uh, how we have built them. Mm -hmm. We are not saying to other countries that take our model is the best way. No, it's the Finnish model. For Finnish wide uh, society, 1,300 kilometers borderline uh, with a couple or a few people, 5.5 million <laughs> people and a lot of land masses uh, and the Nordic areas. We have our special uh, place and that's why I'm really keen on to have this interesting day with Boris here in Helsinki uh, to introduce him uh, several topics in conscription system, mm -hmm. uh, total defense system and civil protection system. But with these opening remarks, Boris, yeah. have to see you here. Thank you very much, dear Antti. Uh, since the beginning of um, my time in office, uh, we work together, not really. You started a little bit later than me. Yeah. And uh, we, we started from the first day on really to cooperate very close to each other because we have similar approaches to what we have to do in these times. So thank you very much for your time, for your hospitality, and especially for our, for our talk just a couple of minutes ago, which was really clear and frank and very constructive, which I really estimate a lot. But first and above all, I would like uh, to congratulate all women um, for the uh, International Women's yeah. Day. Boris took the credit now. <laughs> <laughs> In Germany we have uh, 24,300 military and 31,700 civilian female personnel. Thank you for your valuable service and for everything you do for you and for our country. It is true for any organization, I'm deeply convinced of that, that a strong share of women makes it better. Every organization, we want our armed forces to reflect our society. This is why the women in the Bundeswehr are role models and we need more of them. Thank you once more, Antti. Thank you for welcoming me so warmly to beautiful Helsinki and for your hospitality, which is a reflection of the very good, friendly relations between Finland and Germany. Finland is a strong and highly esteemed ally in the North and contributes 
to the security of Europe and the world, not just since joining NATO last spring. And I emphasized earlier that we are the lucky ones, the lucky guys that Sweden and, NATO, uh, Sweden and Finland are no members of NATO because they are strong allies, reliable allies, with a lot of experience in feeling threatened, with a long experience, especially Finland, with a border of 1,300 kilometers. This is um, like um, giving a picture of what the uh, Finnish population, Finnish government has had to face in the past and why they never gave give up uh, never gave up their awareness and their being prepared for any threat along the border. Finland is a strong, a strong partner, therefore, and our armed forces cooperate closely in different formats. You stressed it earlier. We strengthen trust and interoperability through joint exercises such as Baltic Sea or the major Nordic exercise Arctic Challenge. We send surface, service personnel to each other's acad academies and common structure. I learned more about Finland's holistic approach to security, total defense. This is an expression I met uh, several times now during my uh, visit to the north and the role of the Finnish armed forces with a robust reserve. We can learn a lot about that and by Finland, Finland's models. I also learned more about how our Finnish friends deal with um, different threats in areas such as disinformation, cyber, or the protection of critical infrastructure. They do so in a highly professional and very calm manner, which I really admire. This is very, very good. Also, I saw what it means in practice to secure over 1,300 kilometers of border with Russia on a day-to-day -day basis. It is the longest land border of a NATO country, with Russia a boundary that separates democracy from autocracy. I have the highest respect for what Finland is doing here for the northern flank of the alliance for Europe and for the Arctic region. And I would like to stress once more our joint support for Ukraine, which we, are, which we have been doing now for two years. I thank you very much for your support, for your, the, for your country's support for, you, for Ukraine, and I would like to emphasize here in Finland once more that Germany is the second largest supporter of Ukraine worldwide. We help Ukraine with 7.5 billion euro only in this year. Air defense, artillery, ammunition, uh, what, we, what Ukraine needs, and we have trained more than 10,000 Ukrainian soldiers before the end of 23, and another 10,000 10, will follow this year. We will deploy, first time in history of Germany, a full robust brigade in Lithuania until 27, which is a huge project to do that in between three years. We do that as fast as possible and as soon as the infrastructure and the barracks will be there. And I would like to mention to raise another topic which is quite um, actual. Um, this, this is about uh, a commission of defense we just heard about from Ursula von der Leyen. I think defense in European Union is intergovernmental. Therefore, we need first of all a proper, uh, a proper council of defense ministers for better coordination of our national efforts. I could imagine a commission of the defense industry but um, binding together existing competencies within the European Commission and not generating new competencies. One thing is for certain at the end, we are defending NATO's territories together and can learn a lot from another in these trying times. We want to further deepen our political and military cooperation and I'm looking forward to doing this work with you together. So let's go to work. Let's go to work. <laughs> Thank you, great. ministers. Now we have time for questions, and please tell your media and name uh, the microphone. So please, first here. Ministers, um, I'm Maria Stenus from Finnish broadcasting company, uh, TV, so I'm a NATO mm -hmm. correspondent. Uh, last week we saw European leaders disagree con considering troops on the Ukrainian soil. There was this uh, Macron's idea and Germany seems to be scared of sending long-range missiles to Ukraine. Um, at the same time we know that Ukraine needs a lot of aid 
and ammunition. Uh, how do you see the situation? Uh, who should take the lead that Ukraine could be helped? And, and question for Mr. Hakkanen also. Uh, there was a serious leak in German army to Rus Russian media. Uh, do you still think that Germany is a reliable partner and have you been discussing this, this item? Well, let me, let me start. Um, I think uh, European is a strong union. Europe is a strong, uh, a strong union and uh, of course with uh, self-confident countries and leaders and therefore it happens from time to time that we find positions and uh, hear things uh, which not everybody agrees upon. So this is quite normal. Uh, the main thing, the most important thing from my perspective is that we find together on the way we used to be before and that we are doing. Nobody really wants to have boots on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, there's now discussion about that really ongoing, so therefore we should, we should stop it at, that, at, at this point. And the other point, uh, we are talking about long-range missiles. Uh, well, we all always um, emphasize that um, long-range missiles won't decide that war. And we are talking about missiles which might help at the one or the other point, but the Chancellor just explained it several times that uh, they are one decisive line we never will cross and this is being participants being party of the war and this is the reason why Taurus is not yet delivered well yes germany is a fully fully trusted partner and we have had discussion about this but uh, there's a there's a big headlines normally and uh, russia is also playing this game and that's that's why we are taking this cool head and uh, we are fully aware of our NATO allies and partners, information and security and all the stuff where every, everything is fine in this matter. What comes to the support of the Ukraine, uh, we know that there's uh, uh, good structures uh, at this time to support Ukraine from the uh, support group, Rammstein group, uh, which is uh, led by the Pentagon. We know exactly what to give the Ukraine, what they want, acute situation at this spring but also in the long term with the coalitions, education, uh, giving ammunition. We know that the, there is a structure uh, and there is a kind of system how to do it. Now just we need the decisions from the countries. Uh, we don't need kind of a new coalitions maybe or new kind of uh, uh, platforms to have this dialogue. We know that there is platforms enough. Now we need actions money, ammunition, guns, uh, ramping up the European defense industry. Uh, that's why uh, uh, it's good to have dialogue and discussions in new platforms from Ukraine support, but those are not kind of a new things. Nobody is uh, now supporting the uh, boots on the ground uh, situation, but everybody is supporting stronger uh, support in arms, ammunition, in money. Uh, and that's what we should now focus on. Yeah. I would like to add one thing. Thank you very much for that, Andy, because discussions are necessary, but still we have to focus now. We have a problem with the production capacities of artillery ammunition in particular, with air defense system, with missiles for Patriot and RST, and we have to do everything all over the world to collect, to procure, to buy and to produce whatever is possible to support Ukraine as much as possible. This is the main focus we have, we have to, 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 uh, to stand with, and this is our challenge. Yes. First row. Yes, <clears throat> Carsten Hoffmann, German News Agency, DPR. I would like to ask my question in German, and maybe there's a translation possible, but it's also good if, if I could get a German answer, if yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. um, Herr Pistorius, Sie besuchen im Anschluss eine Zivilschutzanlage in Helsinki und wir haben jetzt schon gelernt, dass es in Helsinki mehr Bunkerplätze gibt als Einwohner. Davon ist Deutschland weit entfernt. Vielleicht können Sie noch mal sagen, wo steht Deutschland eigentlich beim Zivilschutz und ist es akzeptabel, dass es praktisch keine Bunkerplätze gibt in Deutschland für die Bevölkerung? 
Äh, das ist eine sehr berechtigte Frage. Eine, für die ich allerdings, wenn ich das so äh, lapidar sagen darf, nicht zuständig bin als Verteidigungsminister. Trotzdem will ich gerne darauf eingehen und zunächst mal darauf hinweisen, dass es auch schon zu Zeiten des Kalten Krieges für nicht einmal 10 Prozent der deutschen Bevölkerung Bunkerplätze gegeben hat. So jedenfalls meine Erinnerung. Das heißt, das war bei einer Bevölkerung von damals über 60 Millionen Euro auch kaum möglich, das herzustellen. Nichtsdestotrotz ist nach dem Ende des Kalten Krieges sind viele Bunker irgendwann verkauft worden. In vielen befinden sich heute Diskotheken, Clubs, Galerien und anderes. Wir werden den, den Bestand nicht wieder hochfahren können. Es wird aber ein Teil des Operationsplans Deutschlands und unserer integrierten Sicherheitsplanung sein. Und das wird dann zu diskutieren sein im Kabinett, insbesondere mit der Bundesinnenministerin, aber dann auch mit dem Finanzminister, auf welche Art und Weise wir eigentlich Schutzräume für Bevölkerung neu schaffen können können. Da gibt es dann viele Ideen, die ich jetzt hier nicht äh, diskutieren will. Äh, viele Ideen, über die wir diskutieren müssen, die wir schnell angehen müssen, weil natürlich der Schutz der Bevölkerung, der Zivilschutz immer die Kehrseite einer militärischen Bedrohung und der Verteidigungsfähigkeit ist. Okay. Thank you. Third row there. Yes, my name is Kai Clement with uh, ARD Public Radio in Germany. Mr. Minister of Defense, how concerned are you that your country might be hit by a similar espionage affair as Germany just was? And one question in German also, Mr. Minister. Um, wenn Sie zurückblicken auf die vergangenen dreieinhalb Tage Ihrer Reise, was wäre für Sie so die wichtigste Botschaft der Skandinavienreise, die Sie mm -hmm. ja nun fast abgeschlossen haben? Dankeschön. Well, just shortly, we have high security standards and we are watching closely what the Russia is doing in several countries and all around the world in the intelligence. And that's why we are prepared for this kind of, uh, they're, well, they're, what they are trying in the, in the informational space. Uh, yeah, three and a half Tage. Schweden, Norwegen, Finnland, bis rauf in Kirkenes und in Passwick und in Alta. Ich glaube, es gibt mehrere Botschaften, die ich oder mehrere Erkenntnisse, die ich mitbringe. Das eine ist, dass wir in Mitteleuropa dazu neigen, uns sehr auch zentriert auf Europa auf die Karte zu blicken. Wenn man auch die Karte, wenn man, den, wenn man den Globus dreht und schaut von einer anderen Richtung darauf, dann bekommt die Arktis eine andere, eine, ein anderes Schwergewicht, eine andere Bedeutung. Sehr schnell, wenn man erkennt, welche Verkehre hier stattfinden, welche Bedeutung für Rohstoffe, welche militärische Bedeutung dieser Raum hat, gerade auch durch die große Nähe und den großen Einfluss und die große militärische Kraft, die Russland hier aufbietet. Deswegen ist es wichtig, dass wir uns damit auseinandersetzen, die Rolle der neuen, der neuen NATO-Mitgliedstaaten auch richtig gewichten und erkennen, welche Chancen sich daraus ergeben und gleichzeitig aber auch immer wieder deutlich machen, wie froh wir darüber sein können, dass jetzt Skandinavien, der ganze Norden, Mitglied der NATO ist. Gleichzeitig können wir, glaube ich, lernen in Mitteleuropa, und ich will das gar nicht auf Deutschland beschränken, dass die nordischen Länder und insbesondere in dem Fall jetzt Schweden und Finnland sich in den letzten Jahrzehnten und teilweise aus, der, aus einer jahrhundertelangen Neutralität kommend, aber gerade in den letzten Jahrzehnten im Verhältnis zu Russland immer anders aufgestellt haben, als das Mitteleuropa und Deutschland getan haben und sie immer sich bewusst waren, wie schwer es sein würde, auf Dauer diesem Nachbarn zu trauen. Und das gilt insbesondere für Finnland mit dieser enorm langen, der längsten NATO-Grenze jetzt überhaupt zu Russland. Und das hat Auswirkungen gehabt darauf, wie sich diese Länder äh, auch in Fragen der Sicherheit aufgestellt haben. Ich finde sehr beeindruckend den Ansatz des Total Defense, also der absoluten, der umfassenden Verteidigung weil es deutlich macht, dass eben Verteidigung gegenüber Bedrohung von außen immer auch eine andere Seite der gleichen Medaille hat, nämlich die der inneren, des inneren Schutzes, des Zivilschutzes, Punkt 1. Und Punkt 2, dass Zivilschutz, dass Verteidigungsfähigkeit hier eine Frage des, des Gemeinsinns ist, auch des gemeinsamen Mindsets ist. Davon sind wir in Mitteleuropa und auch in Deutschland noch ein gutes Stück entfernt, wenn ich sehe, mit welch großer 
mit, mit welch hoher Zustimmung die Frage beantwortet wird, wären Sie bereit, für Ihr Land zu kämpfen, dann sind das Werte, von denen wir noch weit entfernt sind. Und gleichzeitig ist es aber nicht militaristisch, nicht alarmistisch konnotiert, sondern schlicht und ergreifend dem Bewusstsein geschuldet, dass ein Land sich nicht aus sich heraus verteidigen kann, sondern nur, wenn alle das als ihre gemeinsame Aufgabe betrachten. Und ich glaube, das sind wichtige Impulse, die ich mitnehmen kann. Über Wehrpflicht haben wir oft gesprochen, Wehrpflicht oder Dienstpflicht. Ich bin gerade auch für eine Dienstpflicht insgesamt offen, die eine, die Möglichkeit des Wehrdienstes mit umfasst. Darüber wird jetzt zu reden sein. Und das wird eine der vorrangigsten Aufgaben sein, die wir uns in diesem Sektor zur Brust nehmen müssen. Joachim okay. Gullas from <coughs> online magazine Uusi Suomi. And question for Mr. Pistorius. Uh, what do you think of President Macron's effort to position himself as a uh, Europe's wartime leader? who warns allies against cowardness when Germany has given far more weapons to Ukraine than France. Uh, I was uh, assured that uh, this uh, word about uh, cowardice did not mean Germany or any other allies, so there is no, nothing to discuss for me. Okay, first row here. Uh, Ida Hallikainen from Finnish news media Ilta Sanomat. Uh, Mr. Pistorius, are you worried about the situation on Finland's eastern border and how will it affect NATO and EU? And Mr. Hakkanen, uh, Finland is apparently planning to send soldiers to the Red Sea. Can you tell us more about this? Thank you. Well, well if I say shortly, yes, we were discussing uh, with, with Boris uh, about the long-term challenge with the Russia uh, and what comes to NATO's role in, in higher, higher north and uh, deeper cooperation in defense policy. Uh, but there's also these hybrid threats uh, in our border, what Russia is instrumentalizing these migration flows. And now we are doing preparations with even harder legislation and uh, resources in the, in the border control. Uh, uh, and what was the second question? Uh, apparently Finland is sending soldiers yeah. to uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we have been prepared for this decision, and uh, it will be made uh, today. Mm -hmm. We are an announcing it uh, a little bit later. We sent already in the beginning of February our frigate Hessen to the Red Sea. Uh, it arrived there just in the time, in the, in the moment in which the Parliament uh, gave a green light for for that mandate and for that. Uh, Deployment to 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 help other with, to help together with other partners in the Red Sea to assure and to protect uh, the freedom of navigation and the international traffic in in the sea. And to the other question, of course, the new NATO border is the old Finnish border, and now it's in, in, a, in a very important, very crucial border in a double in a double sense. And therefore, we of course discussed the issue of showing more presence together here in Finland and in Norway and in Sweden. This is what I mentioned already earlier in Norway two days ago, that Germany and NATO allies in Europe are willing, I think, to, to be more present uh, with joint exercises, uh, with um, exchange of officers and, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, receiving officers, for, for example, in our academies, vice versa. This is very important from my perspective, too. And, of course, very important to improve our, to improve our possibilities to cooperate closer in defense industry cooperation, which is really a very, very important um, uh, acknowledge uh, after, after, uh, during the war against Ukraine. More cooperation, more interoperability, more interchangeability, more joint uh, procurement projects. That's all we have time for today. Thank you all.